is coming on. Sixty minutes of laughter and song. Come along, come along, come along. Good evening, and welcome once again to the Cavalcade of Bands. Television's top hour of musical entertainment, brought to you each week at this time by our drugstores. And featuring this week, Charlie Spivak and his orchestra, the man who plays the sweetest trumpet in the world. You know, it'll pay you to go to our modern drugstores for the things you need to look and feel your best. And you're sure of the very best in merchandise and in service when you shop in our drugstores. Step right on into the drugstore, never, never show. What do you want? Say, look around and ask yourself. Are you thinking of perfume or powder? A bathing cap to take a shower. Come in and get acquainted with the many bargains there. Bobby pins and aspirants and beauty for the hair. Prescriptions filled, vitamin pills. Cigars, cigarettes. Beauty lotions, drugs and lotions, and canasters. You'll find them all in the drugstore and a whole lot more. nice being here with you again and to begin the show we're going to play an old-time favorite we certainly hope you enjoy it lady of spain Wonderful opener. Welcome to the Cavalcade of Bands. Well, thank you very much, Don, and you know, for me, it's a pleasure to be back on again. Well, it's sure a pleasure to have you. Charlie, I see that you come from a part of the country that boasts a lot of band leaders as natives. Well, that's very true. You know, Connecticut is one of the states that claims Artie Shaw mm -hmm. and uh, Tony Pastor, Hal McIntyre, and I believe 
Rudy Valley, too. Of course, he went to school up at Yale University. Yeah. And I understand that you come from Connecticut, too, Don. Is Why, that right? I sure do. Just a couple of Connecticut Yankees here doing the cavalcade of bands tonight. Where are you from? I'm from Stanford. Where are you from? Well, I'm from New Haven. Oh, uh, good. Wonderful. Yeah, let's see. <laughs> All right. Let's see, Charlie. New Haven. That means you're from the Elm City. That's you, right. You're usually up a tree. I'm from Stanford. That's the Lock City. That means I'm locked up most of the time, doesn't it? I well, guess so. all right. Uh, Charlie, uh, we could talk like this for hours, but I understand that you played at one time with the Dorsey Brothers, too. That's right. A long, long time ago, uh, I was one of the members of that band, and in it we had fellas like uh, Glenn Miller, mm -hmm. and, uh, of course, singing in the band, we had Bob Crosby. Oh, and there were a host of other stars that were in it at that time. Sort of sounds like a musical who's who, doesn't it? It sure does. Well, as I said before, we could talk here for another hour, but the show must go on. That's right. Right now, Charlie, we'd like to get off to a wonderful start with a couple of young people who are a wonderful dance team. Here they are, ladies and gentlemen, the Hayden.
late after being out late, walking my baby back home. Arm in arm over meadow and farm, walking my baby back home. We go long, harmonizing a song, or I'm reciting a poem. Owls go by and they give me eyes, walking my baby back home. We stop for a while, she gives me a smile, snuggles her head to my chest. We start into pet, that's when I get her towels come all over my vest. After I kind of straighten my tie, she has to borrow my comb. One kiss, then I continue again, walking my baby back home. Walking my baby back home. Walking my baby back home. We go long harmonizing a song, or I'm reciting a poem. Owls go by and they give me the eye, walking my baby back home. She's afraid of the dark, so I have to park outside for the dark. She says if I try to kiss her, she'll cry. I dry her tears all through the night, hand in hand to a barbecue stand. Right from her doorway we'll roll. And then it's a pleasure again, walking my baby back home. Charlie, wonderful song by a wonderful young fella. Well, thank you very much. As you probably know, that's our featured vocalist, a young Tommy Lynn, and uh, the tune he sang is one of our latest London recordings, Walking My Baby Back Home. Tommy Lynn. Well, we'll see more of him later on. Well, I think so, yes. All right. Charlie, uh, they sort of reminded me of a couple of lovebirds when they walked out there. Yes, they do, don't they? And yeah. incidentally, uh, Don, uh, speaking about birds, uh, this act that the folks are about to see next is one of the really greatest bird acts, novelty bird acts that mm -hmm. I, I've ever seen. In fact, a few weeks back when we had occasion to see them work, when we were on the cavalcade of bands before, I thought they were, and I'm sure they'll agree with us when they see it. Bob Hammond's Bird. Okay. All right, that will do. That's enough, Walt. Thank you. Back to your place. Uh, say, by the way, old boy, we've had enough waltzing. That's very kind. Thank you. Back and take your place. The ride on the seesaw. Would you mind stepping forward, please? Thank you. All right, Billy. Give him a nice ride. Hey, Pat. And uh, by the way, old boy, we've had enough waltzing. Thank you. And now to exercise on the horizontal bars. All right, Jim. Let's go. Had enough waltzing, Pat. Thank you. I'd like to present at this time my little friend Billy. Your place, if you please, Billy. Thank you. A nice polite bow for everyone. Thank you, Billy. Thank you. I suppose you know how to ring the bell. You do. Will you show us how you ring the bell, please? Just a moment. Just a moment, old boy. We're asking Billy to ring the bell. Thank you. We're going to have Billy count a few small numbers on the bell. Would you like to do that? Oh, you would. First of all, I would like you to count three very carefully. I, uh, just a moment, please. We're asking Billy to do the counting. The... 
I'm going to ask you to subtract the three from five. Three, are you... <laughs> and thank you for the correction, old man. One more question, Billy. Be careful not to make any mistakes this time. Yes, sir. Can you subtract nine from nine? You're quite sure? You are. It would leave us how many? It would not leave any quite correct, sir. And so are you. <laughs> We've had enough walking back here. Our little friend Billy is going to represent our very beautiful American Eagle. Show us what a very handsome little boy you really are. Very nicely, if you please. <laughs> Had enough waltzing, thank you. <laughs> and we have a little soldier bird who's going to march for us, our little friend Harry. And Harry, I'm going to ask you to carry the flag. All ready, forward, march. capture an enemy fort. Our little American bird steals its way within the fort. a wonderful act, Bob Hammond's Birds, and they act just about human, don't they? A wonderful act they are. Great novelty act on Cavalcade of Bands. Right now, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to dig back into the musical archives of Charlie Spivak and the orchestra. We're going to listen to one of his all-time oldies. Here's Charlie Spivak playing the sweetest trumpet in the world, and stay as sweet as you are.
Beautiful song, beautifully sung by Tommy Lynn with Charlie Spivak in the orchestra. Thank you. Here's an instrumental tune that the, the boys in the band and I get a particular kick out of playing. It's called Good and Tasty, and here it is. present at this time a new addition to our band, and this is her first appearance with us on television. Here she is, a very pretty little girl, Lynn Roberts. Come on, Lynn. <laughs> I'll be changing my home address. 
Boy, she's wonderful. Then Roberts, huh? Well, I think she's going to be really one of the new finds around. Well, wonderful. Say, Charlie, you know, our next star, I've just heard, on the cavalcade... You come from West Haven, don't you? No, New Haven. New Haven. You know where West Haven is? Sure. You know the Baybrook Club up there? Uh, yes, I do. Well, our next star is opening there next week, and I'd like to introduce you to him. I don't know whether you've met him or not. He's a favorite comic in and about Westchester. Oh, yes? He's one of our favorite boys back on the cavalcade of bands. Uh Here he is, the Yonkers Flash, Maury Amsterdam. Don't go away. Thanks for the nice plug about the Baybrook, but it's Thursday I open there. Oh, I see. You made a small mistake, and <laughs> we all make mistakes. That's why they have Las Vegas. Now, what were you going to say? Uh, that? Is I'm this say, Charlie Spivak? Yes, this is Charlie Spivak. Uh, you weren't ever Lawrence Welk at one time, were you? <laughs> no. I heard of Lawrence Welk in the champagne music. I thought this was Charlie Spivak and his warm beer. <laughs> as I walked in. I want no. you to boys to go over and sit down and rest your talent. This is a big night for us musically because in the audience tonight, guess who is here? Who? who? Yeah. A fellow who is not a part of it at any time, but he is at the show. He knows that you are here. <laughs> <laughs> what do you say? Wow. <laughs> All right, fellas, see you in about three or four days. Run out and drink a cup of hot lard. <laughs> Now, uh, before we start this thing, I want all the cameramen to go home. And uh, Sammy Spear can sit down and rest the baton. You have no music to play for me for a few hours. And I have a little favor to ask of the audience. I'm making sort of a research here. Everybody in the audience who likes lima beans, please applaud. Ah, everybody in the audience who likes corn, please applaud. All right, I now pronounce you succotash. Uh, let's get tuned up, fellas, tonight. Tune up music. <laughs> Peanuts, popcorn, chewing gum, candy, a prize in every package, stolen refrigerators. Get them while they're hot. Can I sell you a letter opener? No, thanks. I'm married to one. <laughs> yeah, it's Amsterdam's mellow cello time, the cello that comes to you in six dilapidated flavors. All raspberries. One boy writes in and says, I, too, play the cello, and every time I practice, my mother says, Hey, you sound just like Maury Amsterdam. Then she kicks me in the stomach. I come to you tonight with the courtesy of the Lasagna Mattress Company. <laughs> Lasagna Mattress Company is the only company that sells mattresses stuffed with spaghetti. <laughs> that's in case you like to eat meatballs in bed. <laughs> you see, that's in case you like to eat meatballs in bed. <laughs> see, I was reading something in the paper this afternoon. Tell us about it. I will, and he did. It said that the, uh, the dean of one of the colleges wants to stop necking in college. First thing you know, he's going to want the students to stop, too. <laughs> Ladies, there is a phony corset salesman on the loose. If he tries to sell you something, don't let him take you in. <laughs> a little poem. A little poem for mothers. When children are naughty and cranky, don't put all your knee in spanky. Or without supper, don't send them to bed. Just grab a crowbar and hit them in the head. <laughs> this afternoon, I saw a sign that says, ladies ready to wear clothes. You know it's about time? The sign says, ladies ready to wear clothes. You know it's about time? <laughs> well, he looks at her. She looks at him. He looks at her. She looks at him. She was cockeyed. <laughs> well, look who's here. Who's that? <laughs> I got a cat that plays football. Tell us about it. Yeah, my cat plays football. Last night she made three yards. Tonight she's going to make six. <laughs> Dingle-lingle-lingle, dingle-lingle-lingle. Some sound effects, huh? Hello? Wrong side. Oh, it's right. <laughs> dingle-lingle-lingle. Hello, hello, hello? What, what, what? Who, who, who? All right, all right, all right. Goodbye, goodbye, goodbye. That was the Andrews sisters. <laughs> Once upon a time, there was a grasshopper. And in the summertime, when he should have been working, what was he doing? Hopping around. And the little ants were busy working and working and working, and this little ant said to the grasshopper, you better work. 
You better work or come to winter time and you'll have nothing to eat. But all the grasshopper did was... Tess hopped around and came to winter time. What's out of there? <laughs> and the poor grasshopper had nothing to eat. And he went over and knocked on the door of the little ant. And the ant, the ant opened the door. It was a big door. And she said to the grasshopper, I warned you when you were hopping around all summer, having a ball, laughing it up, yucka doodling around, have nothing to eat, comes winter time. And the grasshopper felt very chagrined and abashed. But he was hungry. He was down and out, and the little ant felt sorry for him and took the grasshopper in her home and gave him something to eat. And the moral of the story is, when you're down and out and you're hungry, get yourself a rich old ant. been a long time since I've been here in this theater. I noticed that they cut the legs off the piano to make it fit back here. Now when they play cocktails for two, it sounds like short beer for one. <laughs> By the way, I want you folks to know that I come from California, and you've been so nice. If any of you are ever out in Hollywood, have a good time. <laughs> Jack, be nimble. Jack, be quick. Jack jumped over the candlestick. Big deal. And now a number that I've had, oh, no request to do. I got that, Sal. <laughs> we have a floor man here who just looks up at me when he wants me to go into my cello solo and goes zoot like that. And I have to do it because the first thing you know, his finger is in my eye. <laughs> this is a little number I wrote myself that I think is very apropos of the season. You know, this is September, and there is no R in my sweetheart's name, but she looks like an oyster just the same. Music for a whistle. Frank Bonetta's favorite song, Dark Town Strutter's Ball. <laughs> it's my mistake, mighty like a rose. Don't worry, I'll find it. I love you. I love you. Every little breeze seems to whisper, Louise. Birds in the trees seem to twitter, Louise. Each little rose tells me it knows you're nothing. Nothing? Ah, Louise, I'll never forget her. What a voluptuous barracuda. A real Sadie Hawkins Day loser. I'll never forget the first time I saw Louise. Down at Coney Island, she was wading the water with her skirt just an inch above her knees and her knees just an inch above her ankles. <laughs> I remember a friend of mine promised to dig me up a date. And I think that's just what he did. <laughs> I didn't know whether to kiss this girl or set a trap for her. <laughs> she was so ugly, she's like an old general. She'll never die, she'll just ugg away. <laughs> I remember she wore a lovely, lovely dress. There was only one thing wrong with it, her head stuck out. <laughs> one nice thing about this girl, I never had to take her home. I would just say good night and she'd hop on her broom. <laughs> well, she had to be up early for work next day. She kept house for the gump. <laughs> then we were married. And I'll never forget a little stranger came to live with us. Her father, he was a midget. <laughs> He was also an artist. You see, she used to draw, and her father used to draw. Made him sort of a pair of drawers. <laughs> and he, he decided one day to paint her as she really was. And she looked at the painting and just raved and raved. And they took her away next day. <laughs> and I, I, I sort of miss the old man. I, I don't know, and her, Louise, I'll never forget. Those little nice things she used to do, like the time she bought me a pearl-handled knife and she wanted to stick it away someplace where I couldn't find it. So she stuck it in my back. 
And then I wanted, I wanted a little pet, so she ran out and bought me five of the cutest little black widow spiders you ever saw. This girl was a doll, and I say that because her head was filled with sawdust. But I miss her, and she's out there someplace. Louise, if you're out there, come home. Your cage is clean. <laughs> Can it be true? Someone like you could love me, Louise. Charlie, one of the most beautiful arrangements I think I've ever heard in the band business is the one you have of Richard Rogers' beautiful composition, Slaughter on 10th Avenue. Thank you. Will you play it for us now? Well, I'd be glad to. Bye. <laughs> Thank you. 
back on Cavalcade of Bands. And on behalf of everyone up here, Ernie and Ronnie Hayden, Bob Hammond and his birds, Mellow Lark, Maury Amsterdam, Lynn Roberts, Tommy Lynn, and all the boys in the band, it's been our pleasure being with you. And until we see you again, good night and thank you. the sweetest trumpet in the world, Charlie Spivak and his orchestra. Well, next week, Cavalcade of Bands brings you the old woodchopper himself, Woody Herman and his orchestra. Yes, sir, and another great show. Until then, this is Don Russell saying goodnight for the Cavalcade of Bands and for the makers of Stopper. And the curtain is closing and the show is through. We have a favor we would like to ask of you. If we gave you a chuckle or grim folks, we hope that next week you'll be tuning us in, folks. If you like to tell us how you like our show, we.